Usually we think of yeasts or fungus as being a bad thing for us. Well, for this one, it's a different story. Find out more. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Pakel Show, where we help people find health answers. All right. So today we want to talk about a yeast, which a yeast is actually a microscopic fungus. It's like little um, little uh, toadstools, uh, but they're just extremely tiny. And this one's called Saccharomyces boulardii. Maybe you've heard of Saccharomyces. Maybe you haven't. Um, but Saccharomyces boulardii, very interesting. It actually was found in about 1920. There was actually a scientist. His name, uh, last name was Boulard. And he would notice that he was in an Asian country and uh, a country in Asia. Um, and uh, basically he noticed that a lot of people were getting sick with cholera, except for a certain group of people. And he found out all those people that weren't getting sick from cholera, which is an infection, uh, were drinking a tea made of a certain fruit uh, that grew this fungus. So as to, after he found that out, he said, hey, wait, here we go, Saccharomyces boulardii. It's actually a good yeast that helps to combat infections. In fact, it, it does a few interesting things. It's an antitoxin. It actually stops the toxins from being made by bacteria. Bacteria put off certain toxins and this stuff stops them. It also um, very important for increasing what are called short chain fatty acids in your gut. So these are like the nutrients for the good bacteria in your gut. This helps to increase those. So that's pretty darn good. And then also it helps to prevent uh, gut inflammation. So it actually inhibits certain inflammatory factors that the immune system, when it battles um, bad guys, uh, it helps to kind of keep those under control. So you don't get so bad of a inflammatory effect. And then it's also antibacterial, meaning this yeast helps to stop the bad bacteria, the infections, uh, the infectious bacteria, which is pretty neat too, and prevents their reproduction. And then it also helps to support the good bacteria. So it supports the probiotics, uh, the, the, uh, the good guys in your gut, the good part of the microbiome. All right. So, so pretty neat, uh, pretty neat stuff there. Now also, uh, what else is it usually used for? Well, it's been, I mean, actually there's quite a bit of research on this thing and it's been used for traveler's diarrhea, acute diarrhea. Actually in the research, they even say for persistent diarrhea. So anytime you're having a diarrhea problem, this may be for you. Um, also when people get diarrhea from taking antibiotics, this has been shown to be helpful. And then it actually helps to fight off specific bacteria or prevents them from making more of themselves. And that's where we see it affecting H. pylori, which is that bacteria that occurs in the stomach that can affect your good stomach acid. Uh, C. diff or uh, Clostridium difficile, which you maybe have heard of or maybe not, but that's a that can turn to pretty bad stuff. And then it also is antiparasitic. There's certain parasites that are more in the protozoan family that can that it can help to get rid of or prevent them from uh, making more of themselves. Um, so definitely, also in the research, there's been positive results with IBS, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. SIBO. It, this stuff I'm, I'm pretty impressed with on, on how much it <clears throat> can affect the gut and have such good effects on um, uh, these types of chronic autoimmune type conditions. So I, I think this is a great thing. Now, I would say if, if you take it, you want to find this lyophilized form. What does lyophilized mean? Freeze dried. It's just the the, the, the technical term for it. Now that's opposed to another form that they sell it as, which is usually where they heat it. It's called a, a it, it's like it's heated to a certain temperature and kept a certain way. They found that that one doesn't work very well. So find this type. Um, usually in most of the studies, the person's taking it from about 30 to 90 days to get results. One thing about this stuff is it, 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 it doesn't absorb in a great way. I mean, you've got to take a, a pretty good dose 
And then it has to kind of build up in your system for a few days before uh, you get that good concentrated amount where you'll get an effect, which is usually about, like we said, three days. Now, what they also found in the research was it's the, the uh, Saccharomyces works better when it's taken with fiber. It worked good with psyllium fiber. It didn't work as well with other types of fibers. So um, really Saccharomyces boulardii, pretty interesting yeast. Uh, again, you know, we think of, gosh, I'm taking this fungus, I'm taking this yeast. What if I have a yeast or fungal issue? What if I have candida? No problem. This stuff will actually help on that side. It's going to help the gut. So um, it, it, there's, no, there's no negatives there at all with this uh, stuff. Now, I would say if you maybe have a very, really compromised immune system, if you've got maybe like um, uh, HIV, if you've just recently had something, a medication that has severely compromised your immune system, uh, then yeah, you may want to be cautious with this uh, because it, you know, we don't want these yeast going out of control. But at the same time, this stuff, once you stop taking it, uh, three days later, it's out of your system completely. So it's not something that really can maintain uh, for long periods. It's something you would have to kind of uh, take uh, as needed there or for continuous periods of time to get the full benefit. But all right, well, hopefully everybody got some good information about Saccharomyces boulardii. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next video. God bless.